Hey Eli for Mobox Graphics again. In this video we continue with the corridor model we made in a previous video and we will be adding this duotone or cell shading effect or whatever you like to call it to it. After that we will also add some motion to it to reach its full potential. The great thing about this all is that the effect updates depending on where you place your lights so that is something you can't do in Illustrator for example. It doesn't take too much to get this result. We start off with a new material Let's disable all the channels and only turn on our luminance channel. Now here on the texture field, click the small arrow and go to sketch and tune and choose cell. When we click on this little thumbnail, we enter its settings. And for this effect, we only need it to apply to the light and the shadows. So disable the camera. You can now see the shadow gradient slider is unlocked. Both sliders come with these default shaders. You can play around with these of course, but for the duo tone effect we don't want it to have this many shades. So click these small knobs and press delete to get rid of them. We only need to keep the first one. We are going to add our own better looking colors obviously. I actually prepared some duo tone combinations that work well, so I can copy these from here. You can do the same thing with other duo tone art as well. Just get yourself the image in the background, double click the color knob. Choose the color picker and grab the color you like. A final thing we need to do now is setting our shadow to color instead of multiply. Let's apply the material to our entire clone already. And also let's take a look at our light. It looks best when we set it to rate raised shadows. And just to be sure I'm going to set the color to white again. Also we don't need our physical sky from the previous tutorial anymore. It will be all bright colors anyway and disable the fog as well. Before rendering, go in the render settings and make sure there is no ambient occlusion or no global illumination enabled. When we render, we get something like this. Depending on your scene, it might already work out just fine or not yet. There is a little bit too much pink on the effect we try to make. So what I'm going to do is removing the material from the cloner for now and create a new one. Again, only keep the luminance channel turned on and set its color to one of those we just used. Then make a second one with the other color. With these we can manually tell what object needs to have what color, regardless of the light. After trying some things, I found out that in this case it is the easiest to add our shadow or darker color to the cloner. And then disable the cloner so we can look at our base models. Now we need to apply the original cell shading material we made on all the floor pieces. You can now see we get something closer to the result we saw at the beginning. But things are still dull because of the black surroundings. So just get yourself a background object and drag the last bright color we made on it. At the windows here you can see it looks different and that is because we still have these transparent planes in them. So go back to our base models again and let's delete all of them. So that is all it takes to get this duotone effect. It really comes to its right when you add motion to it, because that is what makes Cinema 4D a better choice than Illustrator for example. And adding motion is exactly what we will be doing right now. So as a first thing, let's get rid of any objects we don't need anymore. We only need the background, the light and the cloner. Now get a camera and down here set all the values to zero, so we can reset them all. In this case we will have to rotate our camera so it looks in the length of our corridor. Now what we will try to do is making the camera move forward in a steady tempo so we can make an infinite loop of it. Just animating the camera often doesn't work that well. It is easier to make it move along a spline. So get yourself the pen tool and go in the top view. We need to find some reference point that repeats itself so we can make two points that start and end at the exact same looking point. I will take this intersection for the door part. You can pick any other point if you like. But hover over these lines and keep zooming in so you can place a point exactly on top of it. It is really important to zoom in enough or it will not line up correctly. Now we need to find the next exact same spot and create our second point on the same looking intersection. The best way to do this is actually duplicating the point with the move tool by holding command or control and dragging. And this way you're sure it is an exact straight line. Alright, 
Now that is set up, we can right click on our camera object and go in the Cinema 4D tags and pick Align to Spline. Then drag the spline in the spline path field down here. Now it is really easy to animate this. It can all be done with this position value. So I'm going to set a first keyframe by holding Command or Control and clicking the circle next to it. Now go to our last frame on the timeline and change the position to 100. Also don't forget to make a new keyframe for it as well. When I play this you can see it's moving, but depending on how you've drawn your spline, yours might move in the correct direction, but in my case I will have to make it start at 100 and end at 0. Let's take a look at the outside at how our camera moves now. And that seems fine, but if you pay attention you can see there is some easing at the start and the end but we need a constant speed in order to make it work as a loop. There are two things that are causing this. I will start with the most overlooked one, which is the spline. When you click on it, you can see the type is set to Bezier. This means it is calculating hidden points that we didn't draw, but that could make the spline look smoother if we would add curves to it. But our animation sees these points and slows down because of them. So what we need to do is setting the type to linear to get rid of this effect. Another thing that makes it ease like this is the automated easing we get on keyframes in Cinema 4D. So go to Window and then Timeline F Curves, and normally it already has the animation points selected for you. Now you only have to click on this button up here that will remove all curves and easing. After that our camera moves at a constant speed. Looking through the camera you can see the end opening of the corridor will scale according to our position. This is just how things work in real life as well, but it will break the effect of an infinite loop. The good part about this is that the end of the corridor is just this flat colored square. In other words, we can fake this. So get yourself a new plane and rotate it. I'm going to give it a shadow color already. And now duplicate it and resize it to something that looks like a door opening. Put it in place and now apply the bright material to it. In my case the shadows nicely aligned to almost the middle of our floor, so I think it looks better when I slightly move the door to the left so it aligns perfectly with the shadows. We made these planes so we can make them move with the camera, so there is always the same distance from our view. That way the perspective scaling at the end of our corridor will be eliminated. So group our two planes and now copy this align to spline tag we just made and place it on this new null. You will see it unfortunately moves the planes to another position, but just move the planes inside of the null to wherever you want them to be. This is also why we place them in a null, because we cannot move the object where the tag is applied to. If you play the animation, you can see the planes now move exactly at the same speed as the camera, and you get this maybe frustrating effect where the door at the end is unreachable. One last thing I would like to add is a small animation to the chimes at the side here. So disable the cloner and find our original chimes. To get the fastest result I will be using the shear object. Roughly place it around the chimes, but make sure the top is aligned and centered with the cord from where it is hanging. You can animate this with the strength value now, but it is moving from the wrong point now, so rotate the shear object by 180 degrees. Also, there seems to be some curvature to this, making it look like something that is soft and bendable. So change our curvature to zero. I'm also setting the angle to minus 70 in my case, so it looks like the wind blows the chimes inwards. To turn this in an animation, we can loop, keep our first and last keyframes at zero, and then we'll set the strength to something between 10 and 20 on frame 30. And on frame 60, I will go in a smaller negative value. This animation will make it swing. You can fine tune this of course, but when the camera is moving the effect is very subtle anyway, so don't overdo it. Now playing this with the cloner turned on will probably slow down the animation because of all the calculations that are going on, but we will just quickly render this for real as an image sequence. Also make sure you set the frame range to preview range, otherwise you only have one image. And now just render. And after that is done, you will see we have a nice seamless animation going on. So that kind of wraps up this video. I would like to thank Rulon Malsagov, if that is how you pronounce it, for making animations in this style and briefly telling us how it was done. 
The technique shown in this video goes way beyond just this corridor. It is now just a matter of experimenting with it. If you enjoyed this video, a quick like would help us out. And I hope to see you in the next video.